So what if I told you there was only really six money lessons that you needed to understand and apply in your life? I'm going to share with you those six principles I think really will change your life to do with your money and how you view money overall and some of the best wisdom that you can pass on to your children and future generations. Hi there, welcome back to the Mama Furfur channel. My name is Jennifer and the first principle that I hope everyone gets from watching my channel and I hope that my children sends from me is that money is simply a tool that we use to design our freedom, the space, the time, the energy that we want in our life. Money is not the object of our desires, it's how we manipulate it that is then the true power in our life. There is only one absolute finite, true, limited resource in your life and that is your time. Time. Everything else is completely unlimited and including money. I truly believe money is unlimited. It's just all about what you're prepared to receive and open up in your life. People spend a lifetime chasing after money when in fact it should be using money as a tool for fest, I call it. Freedom, energy, space and time. When you use money to create those four steps, that is when your life changes. We try then to do things that we love, we can be with who we love, we can do what we love and I think that's why a lot of people are resonating with the FIRE movement right now. So financial independence, retire early. A lot of people stumble upon this concept of actually they've been working a nine to five job but actually there's a way to use money that I can save, I can invest it, and I can actually allow money then to be created as an income source. I can have this pot of money, I can pay off my mortgage, I can pay my bills. Because of how I've saved, how I've invested, I can then make that an income source. I can withdraw a small portion and live off that indefinitely. Whereas we're used to thinking we have to work for money, we have to exchange our time for money, we have to work hard, and especially have to work long, hard hours if we want to be rich or a millionaire or other concepts like that. I think people do really resonate with the hope that money is a tool or that's abundant in their lives. And with fire movement, they think that's the only way it can happen. I actually believe it's one part of the picture, but the goal shouldn't be just to retire early and sit and do nothing. The goal should be, I can manipulate money so that it allows me to do what I want, be with who I want, and choose how we spend our time. I've often commented on this channel that it is not how much money you earn, it is simply simply the habits and how you move it about that matters. It doesn't matter if you earn £20,000 or £10,000 a year. If you only spend £5,000, then you're in surplus. That's better than someone who earns a million but spends a million point two every single year. They're in deficit. So the fact that you have money that overflows in your life makes you in a better financial picture than that millionaire status. I think people really find the whole thought of working 40 years, 50 years for them to get a state pension as their only source of income is something that we can't stomach really. We know that it's not meant to be that way. We know that we're meant to use money to have experiences, to have joy, but then also that we can create money so that long term when we choose not to work the day job or not to work for money, there is a way that we can still have the life and more that we enjoy. So anytime you get an income, essentially you're getting a value back for your time, your skills, the productivity that you are offering to the workplace or the world overall. So whether that be a day job or you're a content creator, you've got side hustles, you're giving people a tool, a service, and they're rewarding you with a monetary value. However, when you actually start to realize that saving and investing is just another form of spending your money, you're just sending it to different places, that's when your view on money can really change as well. It's not only about me saving because I want to keep money and hoard on to it, I'm actually choosing to place it, to spend it in this way in a bank account so that then I can make some life decisions with it. I'm choosing to invest, I'm choosing to spend my money on investing investments because I know that long term those companies, those investments will want to prosper and grow. So that's where using money, we don't think about lack, keeping it all to ourselves. We think about what's the best ways that we can send it out and spend it. The second money lesson is called the law of sacrifice. And this essentially means when you want something, you have to equally expect to give up something as a result. It goes back to even fundamental laws about forces. If you want something to move forward, if you want something to 
accelerate, then something else has to have less resistance in your life. You have to give up something. So I like to think about this with money, for example. When you want a new car, you actually have to give over an amount of money. So I want the benefit of having the travel, being able to do what I want. So I not only have that car, I also then have to manage it with my time and my money. You don't just simply have a car sitting there that works every single time you put your key in it. So in the same principle, we can think about of any form of debt. You get the increase of money short term. So for example, a large amount of money to buy that car, buy that home. But then you know you're giving up money in future from future paychecks and also time to manage it. You also have to then give increase on that money. So interest that's generated back to the bank. So if for example, you decide that you actually want quite a busy career, you need to realize that that sacrifice could well be to gain that thing that you're after, could well be less time with your family. It's gonna be better management of your energy, of your time, maybe focusing on actually how well you're sleeping. Everything like that will cumulatively add up to then give you the best experience of having that busy career. The third key principle of money is understanding the power of compound interest, but also compounding overall. Einstein called this the eighth wonder of the world. Simply with time and effort, things skyrocket. It's not just a straight line of performance and progress we make. Everything over time is getting added to and that compounds. So if you looked on a compound calculator, you sat and you've actually done your calculations for financial freedom or perhaps how much your investments will grow, you will know it's not just the deposits you make, it's then the cumulative effect of past deposits. I like to think of this when we actually do this with our exercise or fitness you know that you start running and it's hard that first day however the second day you've not only just had from starting from scratch now you've had the previous day where you've ran and then that keeps building up to become easier you can run faster you can run longer and that's essentially what our money's like as well every single day every single tiny micro action with our money then builds on the past actions so the first day that you start will be hard it will not make much difference but then a week later a month later a decade later of consistent habits really do change the trajectory of your money and also the financial success that you now experience. One of the most common quoted statistics of winning the lottery says that roughly 85% of lottery winners will lose all their money over the course of five years after making that lottery win. And the reason is it's not the money's fault. Money was not the solution to a lot of their problems. It was actually the habits that they had, those daily actions, those weekly actions with money and beliefs and mindset that that then allowed them to lose it. They spent it, they perhaps wasted it in areas that weren't important. They didn't know how to manage small amounts of money. So therefore, when they got big amounts, they had no concept how to manage it either. There's a great definition of a genius is basically somebody who can do the average thing consistently, even when everyone else is losing their mind. Managing money is the same. You don't have to do amazing things to end up in a great position overall. Avoiding those catastrophic mistakes, like taking out too much debt, then you can afford with your budget. Also looking at today as a solution for when you want those immediate purchases. Thinking about ways that you know that your long-term habits will be affected. If you avoid them, you're going to be more financially stable, more successful than any one financial tip or one strategy. Warren Buffett said that sometimes parents wait until their kids are in their teens before they start talking to them about managing money when they should be starting in preschool or kindergarten as he said. And I think that is so critical. I'm a parent, I've got two small boys under the age of eight now. They're growing up quick. And one of the things I desperately want to teach them and pass on and pass on to anyone watching my channel is the simple actions of spending money. We want the circulation of money in the economy. It helps us keep a roof over our head, people in jobs, the community as a whole. We want to be spending our money. We want to be saving and investing our money, thinking about tomorrow, but also we want to be giving a portion of our money. So I really believe in the circulation of money and time and energy is think about your body and one of the surefire ways of making sure you're healthy is getting outside going for a walk moving your body every single day whether that's exercise going for a run some yoga whatever daily circulation keeps your body fit and alive as best as it can be do the same with your money I absolutely see one of the fundamental things that people are not teaching in the UK or with money overall is this aspect of giving I think it's stopping a lot of good things happening with money in individual people's lives. And the reason being that I know when I started to give a portion of our money every single month,
jump. There was fear there. I thought that I was losing it, it wouldn't be coming back. But actually, the more that we give to others, to things that we believe in, I've seen a huge difference in our beliefs around money. I've seen that circulation happen where money seems to be coming in from different avenues that then I know how to direct it. I know how to save, I know how to invest, and I, I know how to better our life. I also then know to return more into the economy and things that I'm passionate about. The fourth money lesson that is so important, I believe, is understanding that your financial success is simple. And hopefully you get the real sense of that off my channel. Simple financial practices, simple things done right will lead to your financial success and your life success as well. I really truly do not believe that it should be that you're waiting for the latest and shiniest thing, the latest investment, the latest version of cryptocurrency, the latest thing to invest in in order to be successful. There's a reason that the wealthiest people remain the wealthiest for most of their life. They start by building the great habits with their mindset, their money at early age, even perhaps in their 40s and 50s they start and they consistently do that for a long time, 10, 15 years. Very much like exercise and losing weight, the only real equation that matters is does your income exceed your outgoing costs? If that equation is in the positive every single month without fail, you will grow your wealth. And not only that, the byproduct of that is you've got a nest egg, you've got an emergency fund, you've got no debt because you're not having to borrow from anyone else. You've got everything covered. You're then investing, you're giving that constant overflow. The one equation that only matters. Secret sauce, the strategies do not matter. You can use my method, the money stacks method. You can use somebody else as long as essentially you are earning more than you spend. The fifth lesson is one of those great life strategies as well, not only to money, but money is not your only measure of success in the world. I love talking about money and investing, side hustles, creative ways that you can bring money to you because I know it's part of the bigger picture with your life. You are not of value because of the amount of money in your bank account. You're not even of value because of the wage that they pay you every single year. Your value is what unique talents and unique strengths you can bring to the world and it should be your sole purpose of sharing that with the world. I'll share with you another Warren Buffett quote and he said true success in life is when the number of people you want to have love you actually do. Love and the cornerstones of great relationships, freedom, time, and space really will be the fundamentals that you should base your money choices on. You shouldn't do anything out of fear, you shouldn't do anything out of being scared, think that you're missing out on something, you shouldn't do anything where you're trying to impress people by using your money. Think about really what truly matters to you. No amount of money can compensate for a lack of character or integrity. So make sure whatever you're doing with your money backs up the values, the true sense of character that you have. And the final powerful money lesson I could can leave you with and I hope I really give the sense to my children is money income is completely in your control. You can create your own economy. So right now I know a lot of people are uncertain about their future employment, what they're going to do. Perhaps your business has been affected by this financial crisis. That's okay. I truly believe we have all the resources within us to create multiple sources of income within our life based on our talents and what we can offer. Right now your day job might be the only thing you think you can do, but what if you found another income source? What if you started to do something at the weekend or on your weekends, perhaps even just one night a week that really allowed money to come to you? Don't be afraid to create your own economy. We can do this and then we better the whole economy as a result. If you're bringing in good money to your house or even extra money, you then can do great things with it. You can spend more, invest, save and give. So I hope these money lessons have really inspired you today. I hope that by sharing them, you get a sense of where they've made a huge difference in my life, why I think they're so important. And I would really wish that if you're watching today, you get a sense that these could change your life. And I know for a fact, a lot of my viewers are already practicing and believe in these money principles. So if you're unsure about any of them, why not use this time to watch a couple of other of my videos, get a sense of some of the basic habits that could really change your life. And also to understand the mindset that really could change your money habits, but then open up and change your life overall. I especially love if you have enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It might help somebody else who's looking for their money questions to be answered. And please do hit subscribe if you fancy joining me on this channel. We talk about practical finance. I give you lots of tutorials, how to invest, how to set up businesses, 
finances, side hustles, all of that practical, really great stuff. I show you how to invest, the strategies, the thought processes, the basic knowledge to really kickstart your investing and saving process. And then I share with you success mindset like today's video, things that I know will make a difference to your mindset and then your actions and then your results. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you very soon.